Bibles with you today, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verses 13 through 16 as we continue going through the Sermon on the Mount with the theme of live like Jesus, believe in Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus teaches us, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord today. (laughs) Well, I don't believe Jesus can give any clearer image, any clearer command explaining what it means to live like him than what we just read. Pretty clear command images we can understand. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we are to be intentionally living as salt and as light, as we move and breathe, as we function and work, and as we relate to others in our world today. We are to be salt and light. That's the way we can check ourselves. That's uh, the way that that we can look back and reflect and, and meditate. Am I living out this Christian life as Jesus wants me to live it? That's one of the first measuring sticks we can look at. First of all, believers are to be the salt of the earth. You know, a trait of those who are redeemed should be that they are redeeming others, helping others be redeemed. Their natural lifestyle and witness should point others to Jesus. Your natural life, your natural lifestyle, the way you interact with people, uh, the way you uh, get along, even the way you you smile at the the checkout person at the grocery store (laughs) should reflect there's something special inside you. Jesus should come through. And another trait of the saved is that we are witnessing and that unbelievers that we come in contact with are being saved. I think we lose sight of that sometimes. We get a little shy about that sometimes in our culture today. But if we are being salt in this world, unbelievers, will be saved. The Lord's Church of Fairview Baptist is to be salt to our world, salt to our community. And ministry and evangelism are not options for Christian churches. They are commands. They are to be done. And The command from Jesus, this command to be the salt of the earth, is to remind ourselves it's the why that Fairview Baptist engages in community missions, in community ministries. Why do we do it? Why do we have so many community ministries? Why does it seem so many use our building during the week? Why will there be more? Why will there be a greater emphasis in dreaming up new ways 
to reach out to our community. Because this church on this corner is to be salt to this neighborhood and salt to this world. You know, the, the last step to cooking many a dish is even the recipe will say, after you've done everything, go back, taste it, and check if the seasoning is enough, right? Is the seasoning right? And many times, um, you know, in our kitchen, I'll say, Tammy, how does this taste? And she'll say, how does this taste? And sometimes, many times, we'll say, well, it tastes good. It could use just a little more salt. Salt seasons. It flavors what we eat. The Food Network has a show that's been on many years called Chopped. I don't know, maybe you've, uh, you've watched it. Kind of a fun competition cooking show. And most of the time it's chefs, very professional chefs that are on there. And when the experts critique their dish, many times the greatest critique is even of these professionals, is, well, that had been good. I think it needed a little more seasoning. I think it needed a little more salt. When I went through um, cancer treatments in 2008, the radiation and uh, chemotherapy through this jaw area, one of the side effects is I lost my taste. I mean, for literally for uh, several weeks and a couple of months after, um, no matter what the food was, it had no taste. I mean, zero. Everything tasted the only way I could have described it as you were e as if you were eating, uh, chewing, and the way it felt was a piece of cardboard. Trying to chew a piece of cardboard and swallow it. Wendy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. And she's, every, every, it's milk for Wendy. And she's recovering, God's healing her, and she's getting that taste back a little bit. But the doctor said, you know, taste will come back. And I sure hope so, because it was, it's miserable if you've never not been able to taste. It's one of the mi most miserable experiences I've gone through. But I remember the way I tested if my taste was coming back, because every now and then I'd go in the kitchen and I'd pour some salt on my finger and lay it on my tongue. And I literally could not taste that salt. That salt, I was dead. And eventually I could start to taste that salt. But you know, when I couldn't taste that salt, like Jesus said, that salt wasn't good for anything except for me to toss it down on the floor and crush it and trample it. It wasn't doing any good to me. But when I could taste it, man, when I, you know, I, you know, and Wendy, you don't have much appetite, but when, when you get that taste back again, you're going to want to eat and you're going to have a craving. Oh, you're going to eat great. But uh, salt is very important to flavoring, and we could go on and on. I look around and I am still convinced our community and our world, our nation, needs more Christian seasoning, doesn't it? Our community without the presence of Christ, without the presence of Christianity, loses its flavor. And it is our churches, that's us, together, our responsibility to be regularly sprinkling the salt of the saving grace, the salt of love, the salt of the ministry of Jesus Christ in our neighborhood. And that is why we open up our church building, building to so many different groups, because somehow when they come in here in this flavorful environment and mingle with you, flavorful, salty Christians, 
they heal more. They begin to grow. They can recover. They can learn. They can experience the opportunity to receive mercy and help and salvation. And as long as we do this, we're bringing salt to this neighborhood. And sometimes, too, and many times, and we'll do more of it, we've got to take our saltiness out of the walls to other places, don't we? We just, it's easier sometimes for us to be salt to the earth in here will it feel safer but we need to go out as well this past um of all nights halloween night we were giving out candy to the kids and a dad stopped before he moved on and he thanked me he said you know we're here tonight uh we've come and and the kids have been involved in vbs uh, we came to the porch fest and y'all were singing We've, uh, you know, come to a couple of activities. He said, thank you for being a positive influence for God in this neighborhood. Never seen him before, hadn't seen him since. But he recognized that we are trying to be salt to this earth. We season our area with Christ when when we have our mica breakfast three Monday mornings a month. And at this time of the year, they're averaging sometimes 60. 60 homeless come in to get a meal. And Pastor Paul and Bev and, and um, uh, Margaret and Margaret Ann and many others that have come in every time, others in our church. And they serve that breakfast with the love of Christ. Twice a month on Saturdays, our food pantry opens up. David works in that ministry. Dean and Jenny Holler lead it. And yesterday, y'all had about 43 families come through. So that's 90. We're expanding that to where um, the word gets out. And But you know, as they wait, and uh, some of you in here meet with them, take in their request, Pray with them, um, ask to tell their stories to you, respond in Christian love. We are being salt. We relate to the Hope House across the street over on Lafayette. We have related and still have a strong relationship right over here on Wolf Street with the home for the uh, mentally and physically challenged. And one young lady who's a caregiver came to know Christ through that ministry and was baptized. Being salt is intentional. We'll soon, as Alan announced, we'll add Christ-like flavor to the Fredericksburg region through the oyster roast. Yes, people will come and, and eat, but there is evidence all around of why we do it to help somebody in Christ's name, to uh, see that it's sponsored by Fairview Baptist and River Club and by Christian businesses. And we are grateful for that. So in our future vision of what Fairview will be focusing on and doing, you'll see more emphasis on being salt to the community because it's in our DNA. It's one of our core convictions of this church is that we see and feel and act on the need to season, to season this community. But as we do it, I, I do want to challenge you to, as you share and as you minister and as you do these wonderful things, to be telling everyone why we conduct our ministry why we are serving them. We need to be openly, unashamedly saying we are ministering, we're doing this to you in the name of Christ. I used to tell and still tell people on the disaster field, you know, uh, why are we feeding? Because uh, Jesus loves me and I love you. 
and that's why we're ministering. And there'll be openings for you to share just how much God can love them through Jesus. So we should at all times have the eternal salvation of a person, of a group as our chief concern. And we need to become comfortable and when the moment is right to ask others, do you personally believe in Christ for your own life? Do you believe in God? And, and would you like to know God in a personal way? Let me show you how. And this transitions into the second lifestyle that Jesus commands us to be living. When he says, not only you be salt of the earth, you are to be the light of of the world, the light of the world. Scripture tells us that the world without Jesus is dark, black, no light at all. And I don't think I need to give any specific illustrations or examples how sin is darkening the landscape that we are living in today. And so Christians are commanded to live with an open faith so that everyone we work with and play with and offer our businesses to, they should know that you and I are believers. We believe in God through Jesus Christ. They should know that because we tell them. And if Christ is not shining through us as believers, the world will grow dark. It'll grow dark as the darkest night when there are no stars and no moon. When those cloudy, dark, gray evenings come and you're not around any street lights or in the house, it can be pretty dark, can't it? Scary dark. That's how the world is without Christ. When Jesus talks about being the light of the world, many of the Palestinians knew that, you know, one of their little clay lamps would light up their one-room house. It just, they were good little lamps. They didn't have a large home, and it would light up the whole room. And so... Jesus says, don't put your light that lights up your house, that lights up your heart, that lights up your witness. Don't put it under a bushel. Take that bushel off. Let it shine. One of the favorite songs of our Awanas and our VBS students every year is this little light of mine, isn't it? They love to sing it. They love to sing it. And one totally committed Christian can bring light to a darkened soul. One lit up Christian can light up a group that's despairing, that's angry, that's godless. One committed Christian can make a difference in their family. One committed Christian can make a difference in their community. We've seen one committed Christian and believer can make a difference in a nation. And one committed Christian can make a difference in our world. But we've got to let our light shine. So every one of us needs to be looking to openly share our faith. We, we need to be inviting Everyone you come in contact with, invite them to Fairview. They'll hear the gospel. They'll hear how to respond to it. They'll hear an invitation for salvation. They'll hear and, and learn and participate in learning the Bible. You may say you don't know any lost people without Jesus. You may say at the point in your life when you're just not meeting new folk or have those around you that know Christ. And that may be so, but then I would say, well, go out and find some. Go out and find some. 
We need to stand out in our world. We need to behave differently. We need to have different morals. We need to have different priorities. That's how our light shines. Because when we live and operate just like the rest of our world, when our lifestyle is not much different and we begin to blend in, we lose our flavor and we become dark things Jesus says we can't do. And a saltless believer who hides their light under a bushel is bland, unproductive, and useless to God. So I warned you earlier that to be totally committed to live like Jesus, I said last week it wasn't going to be easy. I said last week that sometimes our feathers will get ruffled. Sometimes our toes will get stepped on. And maybe this is one of those times. We need to share more and be a light and be salt. It's the truth. Christians are to flavor the world with Jesus. Our Christian influence is to aid God, to work alongside God in preventing our community, our nation, in our world from decaying, from spoiling, and from becoming tasteless. We're to constantly shine the light of the gospel of Christ to all we see and all we minister to. To do this is the beginning to live like Jesus and the beginning to live out the rest of his teachings that we're about to embark on. But we can't lose our flavor and we can't lose our light or we'll never respond and be able to live like Christ in this hard teachings he's going to give us in the next weeks. But there's joy at the end of that. There's the joy of, like we said earlier, we experience it when we come in and we sing those great songs of faith, and that's one reason it makes you feel so warm and excited and fulfilled and joyful inside because you are living out your faith as the salt of the earth and being a light for Christ. And I challenge you to do that and to let Christ live through you in the days to come. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, thank you for your teaching, teaching that has lasted through the centuries and the millennium because it's from you, the Son of God. May we hear it, may we take it deep into our hearts and just out of the joy and the gratitude of salvation, may we be salt and light to our world. In your name, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.